Hi, everyone. I am joined today by Terrence Crawford, who has uh, essentially the fight of his life coming up on July 29 against Errol Spence on Showtime pay-per-view. One of the most anticipated welterweight fights in the last couple decades, many believe. And Terrence, uh, this is the fight you've been waiting for, the fight you've been calling for, and you finally have it. You're days away from uh, reaching that goal and that destination. Uh, what is that anticipation and buildup like for you on a daily basis as you go through the rigors of training camp? Why you call it the fight of my life? It, it's it, it essentially is. It's uh, in the ring, at least. I know you've been through a lot outside of the ring. but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. I would just say one of the biggest fights of my career. I wouldn't say the fight of my life. Um, but training has been great. Uh, my preparation has been great. Um, everything's been great. So now it's just a waiting game and sharpening the tools that we need to sharpen to make sure we um, go in there and do what we need to do to get the victory. And the rest is, is going to be history come July 29th. So, so when you sleep every day, how do you envision and dream for this fight to unfold? What's playing through your head? To be honest, you want the real answer. When I sleep, I don't even think about the fight. So um, I sleep real well. Uh, I'm pretty sure come fight week is going to be on my mind. It's going to be, you know, uh, something that I'm thinking about all day, every day. But for the time being right now, um, I really too much don't think about it. Well, try not to think about it and wear my uh, brain down. The stress over it. So when you look at Errol, you know, a, a lot of people consider you one of the most all-around fighters in the sport. When you look at Errol, what are your, some of what are some of the biggest strengths and weaknesses you think he has? I'm going to show you come July 29th. You know, that's why we fight the fight for, for the fans to see who is the apex of the division. And um, I'm going to display why I'm the apex of this era come fight night. You know, Errol said, you know, negotiating the fight with you was at times a grueling process due to the demands you made. Well, what were the terms you, you were fighting for for yourself that were an absolute must-have for you? I was just fighting for um, things to be equal. I was fighting for things to be right on the on the business side not nothing that he could control it was people that was you know handling the fight that had the control over everything and I just wanted more control of what was going on behind closed doors and ultimately you, you signed the deal are you happy with the deal you got of course of course I'm happy uh I wish that you know uh, I could have got a little more, you know, a uh, few more things done, but the fight is here now. I'm not crying about, you know, what is what. I've been signed the contract. He been signed the contract. So why is we talking about the, a contract that's been signed for months now? So um, it's fight time. I'm not even thinking about that. I'm thinking about next week, uh, victory. Absolutely. And in the event of a rematch, are there some of those contract terms that go in favor of the winner? Is that something that you're comfortable with? What well, with the win, you're going to get what you ultimately wanted? Look, man, of course, it is what it is. Man. Whoever victorious is going to have, you know, more leeway and more of an advantage. But I'm like I said, I'm not worried about the, the rematch. I'm not worried about the contract. I'm not worried about none of that stuff because that's done already. I'm focusing on the fight right now. Mm -hmm. With the fight, are, are you concerned at all that a close fight going to the scorecards and putting it in the hands of the judges, is that something that's crossing your mind? Do you need to knock out Errol Spence in order to be the clear victor? I never worry about that. Uh, that's something that's out of my hands and that's out of my control. Only thing I can do is could control me and control what I'm capable of doing. 
and what I do inside the ring. Other than that, I can't control how to how to ref ref the fight. I can't control how the judges score the fight. Uh, that's not something that I ever had any control over. So why could why think about it and worry too much now? So I just go in there and do what I'm supposed to do, and everything else should be fine. You know, you're a three division champion with your eyes already set on 154. When once you close the chapter with Errol Spence, uh, you know Errol has talked about fighting Canelo at 168. But I'm curious, how further do you want to take your career as far as the weight classes you want to compete in? Is 160, 168? Is that something you would ever even consider, or um, 154 is probably where your cap as cap is at? Like I said before, I'm going to keep telling you the same thing over and over. I'm not thinking, I'm not worried about anybody, other weight divisions other than Errol Spence Jr. at 147 right now. And that's the fight that's got me locked in. That's the fight that I'm worried about. I'm not thinking about anything else other than what's in front of me. Absolutely. And then nobody uh, with a... Uh, uh an opponent like Errol, no one should be overlooking the, the quality of, of that competition. It's not, it's not Errol. It's not Errol. It's anybody mm -hmm. because that's just how I go about things. That's how I prepare for a fight with any fighter, not just Errol Spence Jr. That's with anybody. Uh, what has life been like for you now that you're a promotional free agent? You get to guide your career the direction you want to take it what has that freedom been like for you it's been it's been good you know i can't complain mm -hmm. do, you, do you consider yourself a pbc fighter moving forward uh working in that universe of uh fighters for future fights i, I would consider us partners right now but as in uh what what we accomplish in uh next week I would say we partners in the event. And what's been the biggest difference working with someone like Al Heyman versus Bob Arum, who was promoting your entire career up until about a year and a half ago? Well, you just said it. You just said it. You know, um, he was promoting my career. I'm in control of my career. So that's the big difference right there. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to July 29th real quick, Terrence. Um, <laughs> With this fight, how important is it for your legacy and etching yourself as a no doubt Hall of Famer? Well, like I like I've been saying before, I can retire right now and I'm considered a Hall of Famer. Um, so that part is already, I I believe, cemented in in uh, in the gravestone. Um, I just said it, it just put icing on the cake. It was just, you know, um, shut up the doubters. It was shut up the people that say uh, negative things that don't really know things about boxing. Um, and I'll just keep it moving. And last one for me, Terrence. Why must every sports fan watch your fight against Errol Spence Jr. on July 29th? Well, that's easy. It's it's the best fight in in boxing in a whole uh, decade, probably more than a decade. You got the two best fighters fighting each other, and um, yeah, like it's gonna be fireworks. He's always in exciting fights. I'm always in the exciting fights, and what what better to have two undefeated prime fighters fighting each other? for supremacy for all the belts. So it's going to be an action-packed fight, and it's going to be great.